Hello friends and welcome back to another live stream here at Stinky Robot Studios. I'm Michael Smell. If you're first time here, thanks for showing up. We'll be doing a piece of art from start to finish today and I hope you join me, watch it all the way through. And for those of you guys who are returning, this is live stream number 51. So we have completed our first 50. How awesome is that? <clears throat> so we're going to do something a little, uh, mix it up a little bit today. So I think for the first uh, 50, you'll notice that I started off by doing one hour live streams in the beginning and I was just basically rushing through them. I ink things very quickly, I lay down my lines and just move quick as I could. Then we decided, well, let's bump it to two to three hours and see how that goes. <coughs> And that worked out really well. We think we got some cleaner line work and uh, we were able to get more detail in there and all that was fantastic. But now we're moving into 51, the second half of 100, which is awesome. Can't wait till I get to that triple digit number, but I wanna mix it up. So we're gonna, I think we're gonna take the philosophy we did when the very first started out when the first stream was a one hour time limit. But we're gonna bump that to three hours like we did the others, but I'm gonna try to be a little more stylized. We want to kind of, I'm, the whole point of these is developing in my own style, my own signature, my own way of creating art. So I want to start pushing myself a little bit further and I want to be a little more grungy and try to get more work done now within that three hour time period. So if that all makes sense, I'll show you an example here in a second of what I'm talking about. We just want to push it through a little bit more, find my own voice and hopefully you'll find yours. Grab a piece of pencil and paper and draw with me. I encourage everybody to hang out, be part of the uh, team here and Stinky Robot and join the live stream. So with that, we're going to get started and jump right in. First and foremost, though, do me a favor before we get started. If you found the channel, boom, smash that thumbs up, that bell notification. I do go live almost every single week here on the channel. That varies. Most of the time it's Thursdays, but the days kind of vary. So make sure you hit that bell notification so that you know when I'm going to go live. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel, guys. I would appreciate to have you here. Be part of the family. Come and draw with me and see the cool stuff creating. And if, oh, and you haven't seen my new studio tour video, I just put that out. So it's linked down below if you want to see what the studio looks like, where I work at. I've also got another video with my live stream set up. You can also check that out. But with that, dude, let's go ahead and let's jump in. Let's get going. Let me show you a quick example here of what I've been working on. So this is not what we're going to draw, obviously. But I was messing around yesterday, kind of thinking the idea, I want to push things a little bit further. So this is kind of what I came up with. I did this one in only an hour, so it's a grungy, it's quick, and I'm just using more of the actual pen work and try to bold it, you know, push the pen work a little bit further, push the ink work a little bit further, be more random and spontaneous with my my strokes. And that's what I know what we're gonna go for here from this point going on from 51 on to 100 is just pushing the idea of stylizing my work. Um, but that's kind of where we're going. This is an example that I did yesterday, just playing around with the idea and concept where I wanna go with it. And today we're gonna push it out. You also notice one last thing is I did get rid of my border lines. I'm no longer taping the border. It's still the same size, nine, uh, painting, uh, drawn on nine by 12 inch paper. So it's the same size of paper, but I'm gonna get rid of the mat. So if you do purchase one, this one will no longer come with a mat. Um, they'll be just ready to frame drop, you know, drop right into a frame full size, but it'll allow me to get a much larger image. And uh, that's kind of where I wanna go with it. I wanna push things a little bit further. We're gonna play around, who knows, by maybe by 60, I've totally changed my mind, we'd do something different. But as for right now, that's it. And today, in case you haven't noticed, I'm gonna do a ferret with a um, yeah, little punk rock robot. So that is where we're at. So we're gonna start off today with the pen work. I even picked up some new pens today. I got fresh pens in hand. Let's start with a size three and a five, and yeah, we're just gonna, I'm no longer gonna be real tight with my my pen work. So literally, I'm gonna allow myself to go over. We can double up in lines, you know, just want to be very scratchy. I'm not gonna worry about perfect lines at all. Back to me, I will be purposely laying in some scratchy or what line work because I want it to be quick. But also at the same time, we're gonna convey as much detail as humanly possible into the piece.
we will definitely be doing some crotch hatching, but a lot of more, you know, squiggle works and stuff like that. We just really don't need to be overly analytical on things. For some areas we still want to keep somewhat clean. We want to know what it is. We'll see. Check real quick here. I want to confirm that we are live. I think we are. Yeah, according to everything here, we are good and we are live. Again, here we're just gonna work really quick. We're not gonna concentrate too much on perfection. Not even gonna concern ourselves with perfection even a little bit. It is what it is. is in quick.
you know, I, saying, I decided to do the Mohawk again. I played around with the Mohawk idea yesterday just to see how it was going to go. Hey, P. Fogatama, what's going on, my friend? But I played with the Mohawk yesterday and I just loved it so much I decided, you know what, let's just continue with it. They are actually just bring it back. I have tried so hard to talk my son into getting a mohawk. <laughs> There's no way my dad would ever let me have a mohawk when I was a kid. And I'm having the opposite problem. I'm telling my son, hey, you should do a mohawk. It'd be fun. And he just, no way, Jose. Apparently, they're not cool anymore. I had no idea. What's up, Jason? <laughs> the, the ferret needs a mohawk? <laughs> That'd be a fun idea. I'm tempted. I'm think, I'll think about it. Let's see where I, he leads me when I get it to him. Yeah, it's gonna be a ferret here. I don't know if you can see it just yet, but one of my favorite animals to draw. I've had several pet ferrets in the past and I absolutely love the guys. There's so much character with them. So there's still, I don't have any ferrets anymore, but they're still remaining one of my favorite animals to draw. Like I said, we're just trying to do really super fast rough in. Keep it crazy simple. I want to get some cross hatching and we're going to do a lot more pin work. I start going a lot heavier with my pen and ink work for the next 50, I think. Always chasing that, that look. The only way you're ever going to truly discover your own personal style is by doing them so many times that that's just how your work turns out. No. Style isn't... That wasn't really invented. It's kind of more earned through practice and trial and error, I guess. True. True style, it is. Not that I get accused much anymore of having style. <laughs> I am honestly more than tempted to give myself a mohawk. One thing I've never done, but I've always wanted to have, but my only problem is I think I'm getting a little too thin on top. To truly rock the mohawk anymore. I should have done it when I was younger, not when I was wanting to. Been tempted. I'm still tempted. I show up live one day with a mohawk in the air, and I don't, you know, I only get me to be surprised. My wife would be. <laughs> not so sure she's on the same page with me getting a mohawk as I am. Something tells me she's not on that Mohawk bandwagon. <laughs> What's up, WT?
in a second. Let's keep finishing off the robot here so I can then go That's just about the robot mocked in. Now let's see if I can get the ferret. I think the ferret I want to keep a little more clean. I don't want to get too choppy with him. Let's see, I think I'm going to go with a little, yeah, five. Now, I'm not going to be as choppy on the ferret. I want to be a little more smooth. Just so there's a good juxtapose from the robot against the ferret. And a different kind of... You know, one's fur and one's metal. And always, but ironically, I'm going to make the fur smoother. I don't want him to look as grungy. The robot, I'm all, all about the robot looking grungy. But the ferret needs a little more. I'm going to keep him clean.
All right. Liking it, liking it. Not too talkative when I'm digging into the details, so give me one second. I make sure he looks the best he can. All right, where we at? Yeah. Now, ferrets were a lot of fun. I loved having them, but man, are they stinky. They're not. But yeah, they were. I had mine pretty much trained, litter box trained. We let them out of the house almost. We had a little litter box in the house for them, so they were pretty much litter box trained, which is really nice. So if we were home, we pretty much let them run, the, run around quite a bit. But. Their cage. Ooh, man, would that thing stink. We actually had special additives we'd add to the water that would supposedly help the smell. It, it helps some. But man, would they, they were hilarious. They were absolutely hilarious critters to watch run around and make them... Double, triple check all my line work, make sure I'm looking good. I'm gonna go a pencil here. Do you think I should put a little fangle tooth in there or not? That's a yeah. I don't think it needs it. It doesn't need it. Cool. Where are we at? 23 minutes. Good start. graphite the hand smudging I should probably had a piece of paper there while I was drawing it inking over it just about we would wipe the ferrets face away that was uh, almost tragic one of these days you think I might learn my lesson we'll have to wait and see about that
Again, it's not super important to get all of the graphite off of there. Just going for the majority of it. I got a tool here that'll help me. I don't know why I haven't been using this the whole time. Look at that, way better. 10 times easier. All right, so we got our grungy beginning. We're gonna start off as always with, whatever color you call that, cyan. Start laying this up. And I'm also gonna add in some, some raw Sienna. We're gonna kinda go back to what I was doing in the very first live streams. I was really not as concerned with the colors I was laying down. I was letting them become a lot more muddy and then bringing out the details and there was such a play on color. Later on, I tried to clean it up a little bit and wanted to make sure everything's more smooth. And I kind of want to go back to the very beginning, lessons learned, so. We're trying to find a happy medium between both. We're gonna start off by getting everything real wet. I don't think we're gonna do background. I think we're gonna leave it backgroundless. I wanna get the face nice and wet. I wanna have some nice flow. Start off with a robot. I'm just gonna. We're just gonna get worried about getting him in the beginning. Not worry about the ferret as of right now. Can get in just a little bit here for a little color. We can to splash. Cyan. Just start building him up. 
We're staying loose. Just building up as we go. We are not going to concern ourselves with being, yeah, analytical. We're going to loose and free with the strokes and just kind of let it happen. Rush wants to touch, oh, you know, here. It touches there. Not a big deal. And this is kind of nice laying this over top of the, cyan, the raw sienna because it starts creating a little bit of greens in some areas where the blue touches it. And this time we actually want that to happen. Normally I say that, you be careful, cautious, that could be a bad thing. Now, we could care less. Not gonna overthink it. The idea is just to cover it as quickly as we can. Just moving right along. Definitely keep building that up as we go. Sure. Building up the layers as we go and build textures in. Yeah. 
popping some of the shadow work in on the back on the shadow side of the head. Building as we go. show through. It's gonna if I get it quick enough and pull it off. But it's not gonna be the end of the world if it's there. I'm not gonna lose any sleep over it. Just trying to find those areas that I Definitely don't want it. The idea is that we are getting messy with it, so we'll lose that much sleep over it, that's for sure. Yeah, let's blot that down some. Move into the next color. It's just a little bit of purple now. Oh, we're only at 38 minutes. We're moving pretty quick. And that's exactly what we were hoping for. I was hoping once I started loosening myself up, not getting too concentrated with, um, perf you know, I know oh, it's the word I'm looking for. Not perfection, but I was trying to get each line to really matter for. Now that we're kind of throwing that out the window, it gives us a little bit of freedom to be a little more relaxed and just start pushing ink around and letting it do what it wants to do. It's the thing with ink, it wants to flow, so just let it flow. Too much purple, just a just a bit. Mainly kind of pushing this in the shadow in the areas just a bit. flow. That's right. The one thing you don't want to do when you're working with this ink medium is just, is don't fight it. Ink's going to do what ink's going to do. Let it, you know, let it make mistakes, let it push itself to different areas, and then you just learn how to live with it or fix it or correct it, whatever you need to do, but don't fight it. 
work with medium. That's one thing I've learned. So we started off, I was very amateurish when it came to acrylic inks. Um, 50 live streams ago, and now I've done 50 pieces of work. I'm starting to get a feel of it. Maybe by the time I've hit, you know, one, two, three hundred pieces of ink work, start having an idea of what I'm really doing. In order to figure, in order to master a thing, we've really got to do a ridiculous amount of it. Kind of a word salad, but now you just got to move through it, Matt. Got to do the time. Practice your skills. I've done it enough now that I'm just trying to figure out what, what I'm trying to say. What is my voice? What is my style? I think. But I don't want it to be the same as what I do with my acrylic paints. My very acrylic paints, I get very analytical. Acrylic paints, I, I want to. I shoot for perfection with those. So I want to do a medium that allows me to just let it happen. Which I think acrylic inks can be that for me. I think they can just let myself be loose and let it flow. What happens, what happens. Well, you take a week off from going live stream and you can't talk on camera anymore. Blah, 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 blah. These three colors work together so well. The the blue and the cyan. Sienna. Sorry, not cyan. Sienna. And a little bit of this purple. Oh, that is just gorgeous. Works very well together. All right. Yeah, I want to darken it up just a little bit. Normally I say, let's jump into indigo, but I messed with this yesterday and I like the look of it, so we're gonna do it again today, and that is we're gonna jump in where, instead of indigo, we're gonna jump into the marine blue. This definitely doesn't go as dark, but it gives us a little bit different blue than that cyan, and way more uh, bold of a color. But it will play nice off the cyan. Again, primarily staying in the shadow areas, but using it to blend everything together a bit. Like it, like it. I'm gonna come through all the shadow sides of things and just kind of let it deepen all the shadows.
How's it going, everybody? Who all's in the stream still? satisfied where I'm at on the robot so far got a good color base in we're gonna be of course going over the gray in a minute now blend all these colors together we're gonna do somewhat still like we did in the second half trying to merge the quickness of the first say 20 or so live stream I did with the length of the second so we can get a just a happy medium on a larger platform I think I can just do more with these. I really want to push, like I said, 51 through 100. I want to push them. I want to have, when I hit 100, I want to really just be impressing myself. Well, that is the goal. Can I impress myself? Go up there in that shadow. And this time we will be going back over with the pens again and adding more pen detail all back over top of it. All right. Ray. Let's get him finished up. Let's move into that mohawk and I'll get to that ferret. We'll go gray and then of course we'll go in with a little bit of Payne's gray. And back over top of that white to bring all the colors out. Final punch. Remember, we want to keep nice and watered down. We don't want to over accentuate the gray, oversaturate, accentuate, oversaturate the gray. Use it to kind of blend all this color back in. Or I do, I want to come back in and add a little bit more splatter work. This time with that deep dark blue. Super watered down. I have a giant droplets this time. Giant. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Massive giant droplets. We're going to do the pull off method here. We're going to let them half dry. Yeah, that's looking good. They little fatties. Let's just try. 
Get him out of the ferret. We don't want that in there, the ferret. Cool. A few more over here. Okay. I'm gonna give it a quick hit with the blow dryer. Not gonna dry it all the way, just partially, so then I can pull it right back up. Go. Pull it up. That gives it an awesome effect. Cool. Now we'll go gray over top of that. Fantastic. Nice dirty punk rocker. Kind of randomly pushing that gray in all over the piece. Some of it's very thin, you can't see it so well on camera, but in person, very subtle that. Very subtle and very powerful person. Which is why I'm doing it. That's too gray. We'll head back out. And we'll clean it up with some white here in a little bit. Cool. Went pretty colorful with him this time. They were pushing those colors and we just went really strong. But I think, now that I'm looking at it, I think I want to go really strong with this gray over top. And then I can pull that back. Typically I would have left more There's a white showing. Not a big deal. We can always bring it back. We 
wheel here in just a minute. looking crazy dirty two things we're going to do it's going to bring us to life first we're going to go in here and add the shadows in with the pans gray that'll be first and foremost after that we'll follow in with all the white highlights and then that should pop this thing and bring it right to life Like I said, this is always the muddy phase. You guys have seen me do it several times. The muddy phase is always where you're like, oh my God, you made a disaster, it's destroyed, it's just muddy. Now, this is where we actually sculpt. I'm right back out of. Start with the hands gray and start bringing in the shadows. Just a little bit here with this section. Shadow behind each one of these rivets now. This paint is gray. Rivets pop as well. You know, Jason, I like the muddy phase too. Muddy phase is actually pretty awesome. It used to be the part that scared me the most. Now is the part I probably enjoy one of the best. But I can see the potential of the colors and what I can do. This is where I can manipulate the colors. I can make them bolder, darker. I can feather them in and out. This is, once I have the money phase in place, then that's where I, that's my building block. So I get the, kind of like the clay, you know, you get the clay sculpted and you get it put into one big ball. And now you've got the ball of clay all kneaded and ready to go. That's when you can create the artwork around it. So I basically kneaded all of this into nice mushy putty that I can now come in and add all the details out of. The eyes in here now. Of course, we're going to go with the hollow eyes. One of my favorites to do. Love the hollow, hollow eyes bots. Right, two layers here of this. Oh. 
Same with this X on the side of his head. I'm gonna go ahead and do two passes of the X. We're gonna paint that on there. Playing off the whole number 10 thing here with that. Right, we'll do two passes on both of those items. Now, unlike the other where all the other ink just kind of flow and do whatever it wanted to do. With the shadows, I'm going to be a lot more precise because this is just one area where you got to be a little more precise on the detail work. I'll bring it out. This is what makes everything pop off. Of course, there's going to be a lot of black in there, but we're going to make it a lot more browns as well. I'm going to try to go pure black. We've got here, you got you. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Just needs a little bit of love. Kind of skipped over it. Now I'm going to go gray in here. Do some white. That should work. <clears throat> I feel like. Oh. No, 
know, the highlights, I should be able to bring that back out pretty quickly. Back into the shadows. Alright, so we built this up quite nicely. I'm just going to go through here and find is there any other areas I really need to push. There, oh, right in here. Push a few little spots. Hold it. Go ahead and do that now while we still can. time all these areas I want to paint in. the robot pretty much done in a little over an hour that's actually doing pretty awesome that includes the first initial ink wave so I think if I spend about another 20 minutes or so on the hair and give the ferret a good hour you know that's gonna put us right in the time frame where we're gonna want to be at we are going to come in one last time with some speckles before we move on
Oh, pretty happy with that. All right, time for the white. Let's bring in the highlights. Got the robot right where we want him. I tell you what, that eyedropper's horrible. Let's try my other white. I got two whites. One of the eyedroppers just doesn't like to work. See yeah, if this one has more of a look. That one works. Push out my brushes here. Finally, I've done everything else with one brush so far. Okay, we're gonna just start lightening up all these areas that we darkened in. I get the idea there, Jason. Appreciate it. in the head I move in here and start cleaning up some of this neck area really dark before this is where we're gonna start really lightening everything up doing it shadows and highlights to get the most amount of character in a piece do 
get to that point where you think you totally screwed things up and you got too muddy. Start in here adding your highlights and shadows and then watch the whole thing change in front of your eyes. Which is why I think it's the most, one of the most fun parts of it. Building those shadows, that are the muddy section up. You really get a chance to play. See all the detail and bring them back in. A lot of times I would typically leave more white showing through than I did this time around. I'm kind of glad I didn't. Now I'm pulling this back out. Get a lot more subtle detail than I would have if I left a giant section of white, like for instance, up in here. If I couldn't pull that detail up there, I left all that white. Now, get a lot more of that fun opportunity here. Pretty awesome right there. Another layer of white. Where white is a more and it's pretty opaque, but it still has a lot of translucency to it. So it's the white I'm using with these FW it does. So like benefits from giving it multiple layers if you want it more, more white with certain areas. Oh, then you just gotta add it in. satisfied with where I'm at as of right now. I will still need to do a little bit of white highlight all the way around the end of it, but that'll wait to the very last of the photo I'm doing here. The end of the project kind of thing. I'm in here with a little bit of, uh, what do I have this there? A little purple. Whatever color is not fully dry. Look like I got some purple, so we're gonna come in Just a little bit of purple. Purple wasn't dry, so that chose to be our color. We're gonna come in. Now I chose. Literally, it was just like, okay, what color is fully not dried up? And I'm gonna add just a little more. Hence, I think purple was probably a pretty good choice of that. Definitely a good choice. 
Thank you, Ink Gods. Uh, doing a small pass over this, some of the areas. I got a little too much white in. Want it in? Now I've just about used all the available purple, so. Okay, that is just about what the doctor wrote. What the doctor prescribed for us. A little bit of purple out. Squeeze every last bit of it out of there they can. That was a little heavy on the purple right there. White. Cool. We still have to do the highlights on the rivets, but again, I said we'll wait to the end. We do the final white pass, all the outline. We'll tap all these rivets at that time with the white. Okay. Mohawk time, guys. One hour and 22 minutes. I'm going to add some Mohawk action. Start off with some lime green. What I do, I want to bring in some yellow, I think. Let's go with some nice, brilliant yellow. We're going to really brighten this thing up. Hello. Lime green. Man, I want to use some pretty dark green here. So let's go with literally dark green. What else I got? Green, dark green. I got olive green. I've got emerald. I'm gonna go dark green. play off this dark green I'm gonna go right on back to that marine blue again I'm gonna let that color kind of pull the marine blue out of the robot up into the hair blue. okay back the other brush it's a little thicker than I want this one's got a nice sharp point to it. Allows me to really kind of get tight right up in the lines. highlight in there so we'll just start off with the yellow we're going to light to dark pull that right up with our bright green Shouldn't take us no time at all here. Okay. All right, gotta get enough base. Do you want to leave some areas in there white because we want the white highlights bouncing in and out around it in some places? Bring this green, I think, a little.
This dark green is kind of blue. It has more blue tint in it than I thought it would. This color yesterday, I just don't remember that much blue in there. Let's see, let's put some actual blue in there and let's see how that goes. This green a little bit, bring the bright green out. Blend it in here with the blue and the greenish blue and all that. Good. Now it's time to go ahead and add those shadows and highlights into the hair. On. And hands gray. Yeah, that's not getting quite dark enough for me. What happened was when I was doing the splatters, I added a lot of water into that Payne's Gray area, so we got really watered down. So I'm gonna put a tiny little bit more Payne's Gray out just to kind of give this more color. Highlights now. White and round in here. I 
Oops. Got a little too thick right there at the bottom. We can fix it. Good. The green on top of it. Call the hair done for now. And it's time to see if we can make us a little ferret. Okay. So color I want to go with first. Gray. Probably antelope. I think I'm gonna go with antelope anyways. Let's see what colors I got. I got sepia. No, we're good. Antelope. Let's go my color. Antelope it is. And probably a little bit of raw sienna. Basically, I'm trying to make a nice cream color. Nice light green color for his white spots. And then we'll go with antelope and let's start with the antelope actually. Water in antelope and start figuring out where we want things dark. Now we're gonna want things dark in here. very painterly Again, going back to the whole letting the ink do whatever the ink wants to do kind of philosophy areas I'm colored in first of his darker areas I'm gonna start there As we're not doing individual hair, at least at this moment, and we're gonna do it like arc. See where his tones are gonna to be. Work those in nice and slow.
interesting. I painted one other ferret in ink so far. Wasn't super thrilled with how he turned out. I'm trying to kind of reimagine what I was doing there and get out a bit different. I tried to paint all the fur in the last time and I just was not super satisfied with what it, how it turned out. So this time around, we're gonna take more of a, just a blotchy, kind of painterly approach to it. And we'll test the differences and see what I like, what I like and don't like. The one thing I need to do, I wanna keep working here with the inks. I'm absolutely gonna to have to figure out how to do fur. Because I do a lot of animals. Fur is going to be crucial to figure it out. So, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of how this one turned out. Any suggestions you have for me to make it look better? I'd love to hear them. Have you ever tried to paint in fur with watercolor or inks? Anything of that nature? Let me know some techniques that work for you. Big test this is the ferret. Bandit Ferret, one of my favorite pal palettes I had. Oh, you definitely want to bring in the Payne's gray. I think we are trying to go darker brown, black. I think in Payne's gray, and that'll, you know, also tie it together as a. If I stay in the same color palette family and just kind of reviews and things, it'll help 
I together. What we need to do. Now we're just gonna build in our tones. Or attempt to. Stay real painterly with it. Loose and painterly. And now it's a little boring because I'm just kind of painting out with the antelope brown. We were building right. Almost to the two hour mark. Still cruising right along. I think we're doing pretty good with time. Happy where we're at. I was a little worried working on a project this large. That way, even though I thought we would go stay in time frame, we ended up going closer to four hours, but looks like we're gonna stay under the three hour mark, if I'm right. I feel like we can have this fair done within the hour. So that's what I say now. Call me out if, I, if I'm going over that. Still, the ultimate goal is keeping things under three hours. That is always the ultimate goal is to keep things reasonably timed. Again, my live streams are pretty much just exercises as in concept, they're exercises in technique, they're just kind of, you know, I'm trying to make them their own original piece of work and have enough content behind them or enough at least um, impact that can be a standalone piece of art. But ultimately, I'm just trying to push myself what I can and can't do, techniques, mediums and less than that basically long story short is a practice session that's how they, they really are when it comes down to it is that these live streams are just a practice session which is why i encourage you as well to come up with a piece of work that you want to work on for three hours regardless of what it is it doesn't have to be at all a robot with a rack with a ferret on it and if you wish to copy and look what I'm working on and, and try to draw your own version of this, I absolutely encourage you to do so. But more so, I encourage you to just figure out what it is you want to work on, no matter what your stage of being of your artist, art abilities. You know, whether you're a professional artist who's been working for years and years and years, or you're an absolute amateur who's just, you know, wants to get into drawing and painting. Figure out what you want to work on for the next two to three hours. Get things set up and then just hang out with me. Draw and work. Go out the clock that I've got running right now and just see what you can personally come up with in that time frame. You know? Always you want to hang out, you want to chat, all that jazz, you're more than welcome to. I encourage you. But yeah, I just... That's the community we're trying to build here on Stinky Robot live streams is just community of artists regardless of skill level that just has one thing in common that is we're trying to progress our own abilities progress our own work and a community of people who can kind of bounce ideas off each other and stuff thank you Taking my time with it. We're building up one color and then I'm going to build the brown on top of it. And then we're going to pull back some of the cream colors. And put the shadows and highlights in him.
pretty decent. Again, don't forget, you're going to go to that money phase. But there's a part where he's going to be like, man, is he just messing that ferret up? And I am. But I'm doing it on purpose. It's, it's conscious muddling. That thing nice and muddy. We're going to build up our tones and then we're going to carve out of that with the ink and stuff. We're going to start pulling out our shapes. It's going to get muddy and that's by design. Texture is what I am working on right now because that's the fur detail. Just literally all these little variations in tone, texture is just what I'm trying to fool the eye into thinking it's fur. I find this way easier to do with a hard body acrylics. Okay. I got pretty decent layering fur in those, but. It's a whole different medium. For me, it definitely takes more practice. Now I'd be tempted at this point to kind of jump in here and be like, okay, I've got this where I want it. Now I'll start working this. However, if I did that, then I'm gonna have to come back and remember what everything I did here, here. So it's just best, even though it's daunting a little bit, I wanna continue what I'm working on and just bring it right over to the back side of it and just keep on pushing it. Don't take the temptation of just working this one section only. side of the ferret here I'm mean, even more painterly than I was on the front side because there's less detail because there's less detail we're gonna be a little more random with it I guess is the right word a little more painterly broader strokes and all that
Good. Okay, we gotta get past the boring part first. I get past the boring part. days where I'm not doing a whole lot of talking. I hope you forgive me. If you guys have anything you want to talk about, hit me up in chat. Let me start a conversation. Sometimes when I just really dig in, I almost forget I'm alive and I just start working. I think I was getting more comfortable with talking when I was doing live several days a week. And now that I'm going once a week, it's easy for me to just kind of jump into work mode again and forget the camera's even rolling. That's what we got chat for. Holler out. You got something you want to talk about? Is there a movie you've seen lately or is there anything going on that you want to talk about? What are the projects are you working on? I'm curious to see what, to know what it is you're working on. Heck, that's what I need to do. I need to cut, I really got to start an Instagram here so I can see what everybody else is working on. And start having people tag certain things. Oh. Thank you, Robot Live, or something along those lines. So you can post your artwork, and I can get a chance to look and critique what you're doing. Make it easier for me to talk to you in chat and give you pointers and suggestions while we're working. What I would love to do. Really liking where we're at. I think I'm gonna finish with the detail and the tail, and then we can move into moving in some darker tones. Three tones now. some gray in him so I'm gonna get this up and out of the way real quick and loose and painterly is what we want to stick with
Just gonna tap in some gray here. Works the same as it did in the robot. Gray to pull everything together. Really, really this bit. Don't want to overwork. things it's showing up better in person I think than on camera but okay it's just turning down that brown some pulling it out all the shadows again we're gonna add highlights over top of everything here in a little bit this is first and foremost going over the brown so we can just kind of tone it down Top of it, remove this dark panes. gray. That's blue. Green's gray.
that's pretty sharp looking. Too carried away, that give it nice and watered down. We don't want to overpowering it. Pretty easy to do. Crazy overpowering. Try to thin it down some. You can see how I'm, I'm darkening it up here. It's becoming more and more. Detailed. Check something out. All right. Got someone still watching. That's awesome. We got the boring part in the library dropped off, but that happens. Uh, that happens. I'm gonna have to start figuring out how to talk to y'all. one area where I kind of fail so I'd love to have a conversation with you guys makes it a little bit easier on my end of it if I've got someone to talk to
there again, trying to keep it real painterly on this back end there. Pretty happy with the fronts at the beginning. No, there's no highlights in there yet. We're still going to come through and highlight everything. Things are going to change still where they're at. things kind of light this is on the highlighted side of things so I don't want to get too dark here so we make it nice sure make sure it's nice and watered down so we get a nice light gray blue cool actually pretty happy with that uh, huh? Tail action. Paint us some tail. gray and just darken up some All right, that looks pretty good. We still have some pink going in here for the nose and the ears, so that's not fully finished there. Mind you, there will be more pink going in there. Right. 
So where are we at? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? We're gonna bring in the highlights. I'm gonna start the highlights off with this. All right, draw Sienna highlights first. I said I wasn't going to get detail, I was going to be kind of quick. That's always my initial intention. I think when I decided to add the robot, I could have just stuck with it and brought the ferret into the picture. I think I just basically required to do the S. Not the end of the world. Again, we grow by doing so. lesson in it somewhere. some so we're gonna bring it destroying what I already have. That's the tree. That's the tricky part. Don't destroy what you have to add to. Not sure that's easy. Not a problem. Tempted to just really add white everywhere. Going to attempt to be super subtle with it. Ray into the white, so it's not just straight white. Not always a me. Furry, either. It's just gonna be color placement is more important than trying to make individual fur. The temptation is just to make little teeny tiny strokes that are individual fur. That is the temptation of it. Which is, I really kind of want to do that. Not what it needs. Watch the color. It needs the color, not the shape. Does that makes sense. Color.
We need to darken that little section in there. So that right now, that section needs a little bit more. And we're gonna go lighter on the bushy tail side of things, just because their tails are bushy. You know, the bandits and the darker colored ferrets, their tails get pretty, pretty bushy. Some more shadows. Where I feel like the shadows need to be. Definitely right in here. Now I got an eye to worry about.
little bit of the eyelid to here. much The antelope, I need some more antelope. I'm really just kind of working it in. That's always the last one I grab. Start to push this thing to the max. I gotta just call it and move on. Okay. On that note, we're just gonna add a little bit of highlights in here. second pass in the eye. I only did one already. Breaking it up just a little bit. Cool. Get a little bit of pink on his nose and then we can start going back over the final ballpoint pen work. So I'm gonna go with Scarlet. I'm gonna use a little bit of raw sienna, tone it down. There's a Scarlet there. We'll mix that with a little tiny bit of raw, which I'm completely out of. So I need a little more raw.
like so. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'll come back on his feet, just a little bit of highlights. A little bit here and there. Blow dry, guys. We're gonna move on to the final and absolute finale. Kind of cross hatching, kind of just making it muddy. Uh, muddy's not the right word, sorry. I'm gonna just kind of. I need some interest. Giving it some more character. Go over the whole thing here and just add the highlights and shadows. Just allow myself to be completely loose with it. Loose is the name of the game. I'm not really too worried about not fine pen and ink work by any stretch of the imagination. Really just kind of scratches. Pen ink scratches all over the entire thing. Really random. No cross hatching patterns, no nothing like that. I'm just keeping it loose. here in just a minute right now guy working right now with the number five we'll switch up our pens in just a second
Definitely keeping it just on the robot itself. I'm not trying to this pen bleed off into the ferret. Ferret, I'm gonna try to keep a little more clean. So I had to juxtapose crazy randomness and scratchiness that I is the robot. Fenner ink now. One to a number three. And a number one. I think a number one is actually more like. Oh, that's not a number one. That is a number ten. Woo! It had a one on it. That could have been uh, what you would call tragic. This is a number one. No. Oh boy. Too many inks. There we go. Scratchy. Come back in now with that number eight. No, I'm gonna try the number ten. I haven't used it yet. Let's pick that up today. I'm not sure how it's gonna look. So zero one. I need the one zero. Go.
good. Hey, what's up, Tank? How you doing, my friend? Notice you popped in. Righty then. All right, that being the case. <laughs> I like the brush better for this. 244, your music is just about done. Look here, guys. We're almost finished up. Now we're gonna do a nice clean line around the ferret real quick. Nice. I think we wanna go with the number eight. detail. I need to darken that up just a bit there.
Mm-hmm. To the final late touching point. Yeah, I've been doing really good, my friend. I just trying to knock out these other live streams. Like I said, we're going a little bit bigger now. I announced earlier. So I'm trying to uh, you know go larger scale and uh, do some bigger work now that we're over the 50 hump, moving in towards the slowly moving towards 100. I want to start pushing uh, the work bigger and bigger and more details, but keeping the same time frame. So we'll just see. To let him try to find his voice. That's the whole point. Let it find its voice organically. Easier said than done. work in here just a little bit. I wanted to do too much of the ferret, but just a bit. Work in here very subtly. done this is going to top off today's live stream question is where we sign it cool there it is guys finished up with today's live stream Shut down this music real quick. I think there's much time left on my soundtrack anyway, so we'll shut that down. Oop, loosen everything here. Let's pull things back where they belong. Shuffle things around too much. All right, thanks, Tank. All right, so there we go. We're finished up with today's live stream. Not too bad. Like I said, I showed you earlier. I'll show you here at the end. This was the inspiration piece. I messed around yesterday, did a little Mohawk guy. Just kind of got really kind of grungy and, and heavy with the inking over top of it. I really liked the way it looked. And I uh, thought I'd try to reproduce them today, but do something a little bigger and more bold. We ended up with a uh, Mohawk Ferret, which I actually really like. So... See, split screen it is. There we are, guys. That is going to be today's live stream. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for hanging out. If you haven't seen the studio tour yet, I did a studio tour, uh, studio tour last week, as well as a live stream set up. So I'd love you if you jump in there and check it out. Leave me a comment and let me know what you guys think of the studio tour. Or any comments or suggestions you want to make my space, your space, any space better. Love to hear about it. Guys, that's it. We're going to call it a night. Shut it down. Thanks for showing up, guys. Or my hands are out. Kind of inky and dirty, but that's it. See you guys. Have a good night. Bye. Oh, sorry, real quick. And Tank, yeah, sry has been learning bass. That's awesome. I'd love to hear it. Put it on Facebook so I can check it out. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. Thank. We'll see you later, bud. Bye, guys.